show me a few things that are in it. Yeah, give me an idea of who the players are. So this is yeah. the family program. You don't know the players, but the program. In the man cave of his Fort Worth home, Michael Bennett's pride in his military career is very much on display. There's a lot of resemblance. Along with this picture of a three-year-old boy in Japan about to start his new life in America. My parents never hid the, hid the fact that I was adopted. Adopted in the early 1950s. His biological parents, a Japanese woman and an American serviceman. There are so many kids that, that pop up after conflicts, after wars, and I was one of those. But his adoptive parents made sure he knew who his real mom was. Yoshiko Nakajima, alone with a mixed race baby in an unaccepting country for that at the time. She was a single mom and thought the best for me would be to be raised in America. Fast forward some 60 years as only child Michael Bennett grows up in the U.S., joins the Army, becomes a Green Beret, and raises an American family of his own. I've had a blessed life. I'm real happy with how things turned out for me. But at the age of 68, Come here. he wanted to know more. Down, down. He turned to 23andMe to figure out who he really was. No big surprise, he was half Japanese, half Anglo-European, but then the first message came. We have a lot of DNA in common. I know all my family, I don't know who you are. It was someone in Cincinnati, Ohio. Is your mother's name Yoshiko Nakajima? And I was like, they have my mother's name. We know who your father is, and you have a huge family, and they all want to talk to you. What did that do to you, honestly? Oh, it really, really knocked me for a loop. You're an only child? Yeah. Or so you thought. Yeah, it really floored me. And a few days later... Robin and Nikki are the ones that put this book together. Robin. He met Robin Reed. Hey, Robin. Who turned his world... Hi, brother. ...upside down. I can't see the top of your face. Uh, you know what it looks like. It looks just like yours. <laughs> his late father, their father, was a man named Dick Webster. And this is him. A man who told a sad story that he fell in love with a woman named Yoshiko, had a son, and begged to stay with them in Japan. The Air Force said, you've been here before, you're going back. Never to see them again. He was a broken-hearted man over losing his family in Japan. He remarried, started a family in Ohio, and tried to move on. Don't you make me cry. <laughs> that picture of that little boy stayed with me all these years. That head full of black hair and those beautiful dark eyes stayed with me all these years. And I wanted to know where my brother was. Both of Michael's biological parents died before he could meet them, but after a 14-hour drive to Cincinnati, he found Robin and his seven brothers and sisters standing on the curb waiting to greet him. I don't know if they're all huggers, but they were that day, you know, and I am not, but I was. And they told him so, he looked you know, more like their dad. Uh, so go figure. Than any of them did. It was like looking at a ghost, and to be able to hug him, it, that's powerful. We really wanted to find him. I thank the Lord above that we got in touch before the end of our days. We pick you, Mike, and you picked us, and I thank you so much for that. Thank you, brother. Love you. I love you more. Mm. Love you, man. Good girl. Wait. Not all DNA stories end like this. Where's your ball? But this one has a Fort Worth veteran talking and texting and hugging <laughs> as often as he can. It's opened up a whole new world for me, a family. He is one of us. He is a part of us. He belongs to us. Thank you, sister. I get to be a big brother. I cherish that. I'm, I'm having a great time. And I don't want to miss another moment. The next moment, with plenty of hugs, is scheduled for Fort Worth in June. And now we're eight. Love you, Mike. Love you, sweetie. Bye-bye. Bye. In Fort Worth, I'm Kevin Reese.